Oh, we're back with you, and we're going to be taking a look at the markets with a little extra in the studio help from Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated in Nashville. And I hope you actually had a, a really good weekend here, oh, Chris. I did so what's, uh, what's going on uh, here on a Monday, in your well, opinion? Well, it's kind of interesting. I had a little grain trade a little bit higher. It's kind of uh, fun to see on a Monday morning. And uh, livestock worked uh, just really screaming up or now when I left the office this mm -hmm. morning. So maybe just a little quiet time. Uh, Oil took the big picture away from everything today. It did. That garnered all the attention over the weekend. Yeah. And I, I guess I have to admit I was kind of surprised the grain markets were actually relatively quiet. They're more of a spectator today. Yeah, they are. Corn would probably be the only one that would really participate in it, and at least it is form, but, uh, firm. But I think that there is some issues all of its own that's probably going to keep it firm for a while. And a little bit of a surprise in uh, Kansas City wheat. We'll get to that in okay. a second here. Let's right. take a look at the, where we are now trading. We'll start with that corn market in Chicago. And, you know, we started out fairly firm here, Chris. Uh, we had the corn on December actually trading about, oh, three and a half, almost four cents higher there a little bit ago. We're kind of easing off those highs already a little bit, but we're still up by a penny and three quarters right now. That would put that in December contract at 370 and a half. And we have the March, a penny and a half higher. September contracts, they're finally all gone. We yep. put them to rest last week. Let's take a look at our soybean trade here so far. And now you have your November contract back on the minus side. Last time we looked, it was on the plus side. Uh, now we're down a half at 8.98 and a quarter. Been as high as 904 and three quarters in the early morning trade. Uh, let's look at January down a half at 911 and three quarters. On the wheat trade in Chicago this morning, we have December now three and a half higher. It's trading at 487, so we're almost a nickel off of our earlier lows. If you look at the uh, Kansas City market, KC wheat up six and three quarters on December at 406 and a half. Now, why do you think that KC wheat would be rallying like that? You might need some hard red winter wheat. <laughs> are they, are they uh, using that more of a, a feed grain substitute? I, they had been, but I don't know if that's the reason it would run up now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't probably just allude to that right off the hand. But uh, I think there's probably some wheat has been moving over the last two or three months. We've seen a lot of wheat movement getting out of the bins, getting ready for the corn harvest. So more likely than not, you've cleaned down the bins all you're going to. Anything that's left might be a little bit firmer bid to take away. What about the argument that uh, they're now going to start planting winter wheat, hard red winter wheat especially in the uh, southern plains? And we were talking about it earlier this morning that they don't have a whole lot of incentive to really put a lot in there this no, year. No, grazing would be the only thing. And, yeah. and we do have an awful lot of cattle out there that will, you know, this year's calf crop is probably going to be equal to last year's calf crop. Even if it's higher or lower by a percent, it's still going to be close to it. So I think grazing will be the biggest biggest uh, issue for it, biggest need, biggest need for it. Could it be bidding up for acres, as they say in the spring? Uh, on uh, it's, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Now, I know they're having problems in Australia and uh, Argentina, too, I believe, with dryness. And right? I got some information on Australia this morning. I, I can't wait to get back and read it. I haven't had a chance okay. to, but, but it is all about the drought that they are having over there. And uh, this guy that writes this article is right in the midst of it. So. Oh, all right. Well, I can't wait to yeah. uh, hear more about that, right. and that could have a definite impact on the cattle in this oh, Almost definitely. It's going to. <laughs> provides us a great segue into our next segment. Uh, we're going to be talking about the cattle and the hog markets as we open things up on a Monday, and we'll be back right after these messages. We are back with you, and we're talking with Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated in Nashville. He joins us in studio today. Well, uh, before the break, you alluded to some information about Australia that you're yes. eager to uh, dive into here. You've heard a lot of talk about the hardship that they have with uh, wheat production there, but a lot of cattle, I believe, have been sold maybe earlier than they wanted to just because of the dry pasture conditions down there, right? That's true. They're in a liquidation phase. Okay. Um, it, it really doesn't have any desire of want. It is a desire of need to get rid of, and they are trying to bring the herd down to what uh, water that they have left. They're going into the springtime. It doesn't look like they're going to get a drought breaking rain, but it, seemingly they're probably getting very close to an end of the forced liquidation in order to get, uh, to get these cattle down to the mm -hmm. water supply that they have left. Were it to rain, then instantaneously they would pull every cow and heifer out of the kill mix, put them back into the breed cycle, and then the world would be short from Australia beef right now. Cause Aren't it, they a big supplier to China? They are a huge supplier to China and to Japan. They ship approximately 60% of their beef goes export. 
Uh, Japan is one of their larger customers there, and I believe that is one reason why Japan renegotiated some of our uh, beef uh, exports to them this year is because they know that soon they'll be running out of a, an export, uh, an importer. For so them. it's kind of a double-edged sword, isn't it? If, if they get a lot of rain in, in Australia, mm -hmm. that would uh, mean more wheat production. That would be bad for wheat prices, wheat prices here. Yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand, it may keep cattle off of the market if they hold them back to put them back on pasture, yeah, it's, it's, that would help our cattle are, producers. They are right at about our levels in 2012 and 13. When, when the United States was just coming out of the 2012 drought, we instantly held back every cow and every heifer we could and built that herd up. Yep. And so I, I think there is a real close similarity between what their current production cycle is and what ours was back in the 12, 13 time. And first. then when, where <laughs> when China get their beef, yeah. Uh, or maybe through Hong Kong. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. how, how does that work? Um, let's take a look at what's going on with the live cattle trade right now and get you updated. Current quotes. Oh, look at this. We have a bounce going on here. We have the October live cattle now up 88 at 98.95. December now 35 higher at 104.72. So when we opened up, it was about exactly flat. Yeah. I mean, we were just very narrowly mixed a tick or two. Let's uh, check out our feeder cattle market here. On the feeders, well, we're higher here too now. September 28 higher. October now up 58 at 135.15. Is that where more volume is, do you think? Yes, October? yes, October. It is. Volume. Okay. So we'll keep an eye on that one, and that is showing the biggest gain right now. And then the lean hogs, which opened lower. Remember, we had a $7.5 run the last two days. Well, here we have turned them around too. Now, December is up 33 at 69.03. Now, the nearby October is down 88, but uh, you're saying December is where the volume is? December the on hogs. the hogs, yes. So, um, okay, so we'll watch that one, and it has turned around. Look at that uh, spread already, or the range. 67.13 for a low. Now, 69.03 is where we are, so almost $2 off that February, now up 45. Wow, could be an exciting day. Well, thanks for coming in. Absolutely, Appreciate always it. a pleasure. You bet. Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated here in Nashville. So. We talked about it. We, we said, said by midday they could turn higher. It only took about 45 minutes, and there you go. We'll see where they go from here. Thank you, Chris. Thank Absolutely. you, Marlon. Yep.